Hello, welcome to the field. Haven't been here in months because of the coldness and the wetness. How's it looking? I'm on the other side because the wind is blowing from behind me, so I'm trying to get some shelter. It looks kind of idyllic and the temperature got up to about nine degrees, which is nice, but it was quite still at home, but it's blowy here and that's made it cold again. Don't be fooled by this nice grass. Some of it is like a foot of water as you walk on and the rest is very very muddy so we don't want to crash the good news is it means the cows aren't here because they will churn it up thanks very much to radio master for sending me over this hat just before christmas it's great it's very handy for this sort of stuff why am i here well we're going to do the open ipc msd os msp osd test so i've got my free quads lined up here they are here we've got the uh one running the run cam wi-fi link and this is, I think, the Emacs Wyvern link. We've got the little tiny whoop-based one and this large one where it didn't uh, it didn't fit in this quad very well, so I've had to do an external mount on it. I've got a new frame, if you saw that video, link over here somewhere. Uh, that's what I intend to put that one in so it will fit better. So I'm looking basically just to fly these around, see if the whole MSPOSD is a lot better and, uh, and go from there really. This is also the first test of the larger of the Emacs offerings because I, I couldn't get it mounted before. Um, and I've tried to adjust the focusing on the little Emacs camera. Uh, Emacs told me that th these pre-production ones went out with a 3D printed uh, camera case, which means it's not, it's not very tight, uh, which is possibly why it's moving and becoming out of focus. So we'll see how that goes. It's very difficult to focus because you've got this tiny bit of lens sticking out and trying to hold that with one hand and then do the the uh, focus lock with another is, is tricky but hey we'll give it a go one of the other things i want to do is get a, a better system i'm going to be flying with my um i forgot what this is called now that into my goggles and i'm having to use this into uh, a tablet using a uh, pixel pilot which is not ideal so at some point in the near future i'll be looking at getting a redaxa building that up into an all-in-one uh, sort of goggle mounted dvr and uh, video receiver but for now let's fly these guys this is also going to be the first time i'm going to be flying with the radio master gx12 I had a look at it really liked it and we'll see this this time how it flies with everything i've actually got a multi-protocol module in the back because i've still got um one of these quads the little uh emacs one is still on the free sky receiver i need to swap that out for an elrs but just before we get to the flying, a quick word from our sponsor, which today is PCBWay. PCBWay, as its name suggests, can prototype and assemble PCBs for you. If you design your own PCBs, then you probably know this already. Now, I don't have much of a clue about PCB design, but with an open source project like OpenIPC, if someone makes an open source piece of hardware for it, you'll often be able to get a Gerber file for that design, which contains the PCB design, and send this to PCBWay to get your own PCBs made, without needing to know anything about the design process. But it's not just PCBs. CNC machining, laser cutting, sheet metal bending, 3D printing, and injection molding are just some of the extra things they can do. And in materials that are way out of reach for most hobbyists. So if you want to look at having them make something for you, check them out at pcbway.com. So starting out then with the Runcam Wi-Fi Link quad and everything, well, I say everything, most things seem to be looking pretty good. For some reason though, the barometer seems to have gone crazy. You see we're getting a kind of minus figure going on there. I'm not sure why. I've never had a barometer sort of go weird before, but this certainly seems to be doing it. I've also got the alarm function on the RSSI going too early, so it doesn't need to, you know, worry me until it gets like minus 105 or something. But it's it's flashing away there, as you can see. But yeah, it, everything's very readable and everything looks good, generally speaking. Apart from the DVR, as I explained, I'm getting my footage directly into the goggles from my NVR. And this is a smooth 60 frames a second, never drops a frame, never has an issue. The receiver that's going into the tablet is literally right next to the other receiver. So I don't know why there's a difference, but what I find, you'll see these breakup things. I didn't get any breakup whatsoever on the goggles. It seems like if there's just a little bit of a frame that's not complete or something, then the the laptop pauses recording. Uh, that would be a real problem if you were flying through that because you'd have situations where you'd lose the 
picture for like a second or two as you saw it just freeze up there didn't happen to me in the goggles and that's one of the reasons i want to build uh, a proper dvr and goggle hdmi thing from uh, one of the redactors i should also say as i mentioned before that the recording on the tablet's not smooth this is not a particularly good tablet and although it's getting the picture coming in at 60 odd frames a second it's uh, it's actually recording it on an average of about 44.37 frames per second it's what my uh, mac tells me which is obviously not ideal and you can see it looks a bit jerky it doesn't look jerky in the goggles it does have a little bit of you can see a bit of jello here it was pretty windy so it was sort of blowing that camera about a bit it's not perfect by any means but yeah it, it flew fine and everything worked fine with the ms OSD so I decided that's good I've got some more batteries to fly but I'll fly something else so here is the bigger of the Emacs equipped quads and I took off there was a dramatic loss of power and it just went down the reason why is I'd done a setup in Betaflight I hadn't put the props on tightly yet I'd managed to hover it in the garden fine but when I got out here and actually did it for real it uh, it dumped so I, I got it back and tightened those up again so with the prots on tight I went for it again and ooh, that wasn't good now you're probably wondering exactly what happened there because um, it it all went sort of auto from my point of view in a, in a couple of seconds uh, let me take you through it in slow motion so what you'll see is I take off and I'm in air mode the quad starts going up very quickly and I drop the throttle but nothing happens so what I do then is I take it out of air mode because essentially what's happening is on a quad that's not stable when it starts to shake each of the motors try and produce more for us to try and combat the sort of instability from the other side and what can happen is all four motors lock out 100% just going for it and even if you drop your throttle to nothing it doesn't matter because it's already happening there so hence my instant reaction about coming out of air mode and bringing it round again it felt okay on very low throttle but anything above like not much and it felt very shaky so i thought bring it in let's have another look well having just looked at it we don't seem to have any physical issue with this one and i've just hovered it as i did in the garden and at low uh throttle it's fine you go up a little bit though and we get that big oscillation so i think it's just a, a tune issue unfortunately i'm not really gonna be able to fly that properly today so <sighs> hopefully we'll get that transplanted into a better frame so it all fits nicely anyway so I moved on to my small quad with the tiny Emac system in it but there was a problem again uh, the camera looks great but when I attempted to arm it it just came up and said load on the screen which I'd never seen before and it didn't have any internet so I had to call my friend Jack as an internet proxy and said have you seen this he hadn't come across it but a quick Google revealed it seems to be a CPU load issue the only weird thing about this this is exactly the same config I used previously and nothing has changed and it flew fine then and yet suddenly here it's got a CPU problem so all I really had flying was the run cam system which which worked great it's just I was hoping to get everything going again you'll see these pauses on the DVR recording on the tablet that weren't there I was able to fly it around uh, the latency to me feels really good you know I'm not doing any serious gaps but it felt absolutely fine approaching you know trees and, and going round and quite close to stuff and we didn't really get any problem I did have a question pop up about what sort of range they'll get the answer is I don't know because I don't know and I don't think the range drops off gently so I didn't want to be flying around trying to go for a distance thing and it just disappear and crash so as soon as I got something with a GPS on it then you know I can test out a bit more anyway I had to um, call it quits after flying that one quad that actually worked but yeah the MSP OSD stuff looks great now I just need to go back and fix the other stuff just plug this guy in beta flight and yeah if we look at the CPU load it's running at 62 which is really high so we've got an 8K, 8K loop. What I'm going to do is drop that down to 4K. So changing to a 4K loop has brought that load down to 32%, which is higher than I want, but still reasonable. Okay, just a quick just see if it'll arm. Yay. Great, but a little bit late. I feel aspects of that day could have gone better. 
I was trying to figure out what happened with this one and I thought, well I used to have it on six inch three bladed props but I didn't have any. I found these two bladed ones and I thought that couldn't be it. And then I remembered that I had a failure, I think in either the flight controller or the SC, so I think I swapped both of those out. So I don't think I did any setup on it. I hovered it in the garden, it was fine. I was like, oh, that's fine, let's give it a go. Obviously wasn't. So I'll fix that or attempt to transplant it all onto this frame. This little guy confused me because it flew fine last time and I hadn't changed anything, but at least I found out what it was and how to fix it. I might, time permitting, change it over to an ELRS uh, one though, so they're more useful. So that was to test open IPCs MSP OSD, but I was aware even when I went, uh, the little scamps over at OpenIPC had kept developing. So there was plenty that I hadn't put on there. I think the big one was, I think they call it the 40 Hertz mode, essentially having a lot more uh, bit rate for what you're getting. Personally, I thought the the picture was quite good. It compared very favorably to Walksnail because Walksnail tends to blur grass together in this like bleh, one color. Um, it does well at different things, but grass is especially bad. And the open IPC stuff seemed to do very well there. But aside from upping the bitrate, which I'll test out for next time, I think looking at Mario FPV's just dropped a video now about the adaptive link. The, the way open IPC works is different than Walksnell and things like DJI, in which it's a bi-directional link. So if a, a frame comes in and it's not got some data there, then the receiver will ask for a certain amount of retransmission, putting it in a very basic way, and then it builds the frame back up. OpenIPC doesn't have that, so it doesn't have a way of um, trying to get the, the best or the resends. But what the adaptive link should do, I think, is the, the receiver part will understand what its uh, signal strength is. And if that signal strength is getting dodgy, then it should dynamically lower the bit rate. This is what I'm saying from previous conversations. I hope that's the case, uh, but I'll check that out and I'll be aiming to put that on my free quads next time. And hopefully, hopefully fly them all successfully this time and have a better system. So I get myself a Redaxa, I can mount it on my goggles. In that way, A, I'm getting a better DVR recording and B, my receiving equipment's not sat on the ground, which is not optimal, because I can at least stand up and get a better signal that way. Anyway, I hope that's been handy, and I will see you all next time. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing, and if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.